told the AV is in order, so good evening and welcome to this regular meeting of the Council of the Municipality of North Perth, enabled by digital technologies. Our meeting date is Monday, June 13, 2022. I'm Mayor Todd Kaysenberg and I'll call this meeting to order. I ask the clerk to note our starting time for the minutes is 7 p.m. We acknowledge that we are on the traditional land of the Anishinaabe peoples. We wish to recognize the long history of Indigenous peoples in Canada and show our respect to them today. We recognize their stewardship of the land. May we all live with respect on this land and live in peace and friendship. Tonight's meeting is being streamed live on the Municipality of North Perth YouTube channel and will be available there after the meeting as an archived video. Anyone who is invited to speak will be recorded and their voice, image, and comments will form part of the live stream. The chair and or the clerk have the discretion and authority at any time to direct the termination or interruption of live streaming. Such direction will only be given in exceptional circumstances where deemed relevant. Circumstances may include instances where the content of debate is considered misleading, defamatory, or potentially inappropriate to be published. Thank you. Welcome to those who are joining us via the YouTube channel. Welcome to counselors, staff, and any uh, subject matter experts or delegates who are participating in the meeting tonight. At this time, I invite your decorum over the course of the meeting. I have regrets tonight from an attendance perspective from Deputy Mayor Doug Kellum. Uh, we are expecting Councillor Alan Rothwell tonight, although he may be a little late, he's returning from a flight. Let us move at this time to item 2.1 of our agenda pertaining to pecuniary interest. For the benefit of those unfamiliar with our council practices, provincial legislation requires councillors with a potential pecuniary or financial interest in any item at the council table to declare this interest and to remove her or himself from discussions and voting on the item. In accordance with recommended protocol at this time, I invite all councillors with pecuniary interest or perceived pecuniary interest, including those who have declared already in writing to verbally advise the chair in public session and to submit documentation to this effect in writing to the clerk. Councillors are further reminded that should a potential conflict arise during the meeting, they may so declare and act at any point in the meeting. We've had one advice to the clerk ahead of this meeting, as I'm told, and that is Councillor Andreessen. Councillor Andreessen, welcome tonight, the floor is yours. Yes, thank you, Mayor Kaysenberg. Well, um, welcome to you as well. Um, I just want to declare pecuniary interest on item 5.6.1. It's regarding the Horton Municipal Drain, as my husband and I own farmland on this drain as well. Subsequently, I won't be participating in 13.1, the confirmatory bylaw. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are there any other councillors wishing to make a declaration at this time? Klein, are you seeing anything? We're not seeing anything, so we'll move forward. To explain our virtual processes, I will be systematically trying to seek consent from various councillors as movers and seconders to various resolutions and bylaws that we put before us tonight. I will do this to some degree alphabetically. Should a councillor not wish to respond to the request, they may say so, and I will move to the next name on the alphabetical list. Regarding speaking to our business, counselors tonight will identify themselves through our conferencing technologies text chat function. The clerk is assisting me tonight in maintaining the speaking order from that source. Counselors are allowed on their turn to deliver a primary question or comment and may make one supplemental without intervention from me. We will follow speaking order relatively carefully. Any counselor wishing to have a second say will have to indicate again and go to the bottom of the speaking list. This is a normal process consistent with Robert's rules of order. Councillors, are, you are asked to maintain generally a mute state in the web conference until I recognize your right to the floor. If when I do so recognize, I don't hear you because you are muted or having some technical difficulty, I will advise. Should technical difficulty be the cause, support will be coming from your way from our IT time team and Simon is on duty tonight. And I will, after a reasonable pause, call on our next speaker coming back to you when you are next available. 
Should any of your votes not show up in eScribe, our voting technology, I will call on you when things seem stalled to register a manual vote. At that time, take yourself off mute, answer yes or no on the motion, then return to mute. Regarding item 2.2 of our agenda, I have a motion before me for the adoption of the agenda for tonight's meeting that reads as follows, that the agenda for tonight's meeting be approved. Why don't we start tonight with Councillor Richardson. Welcome. And will you serve as our mover? Welcome, Mayor Kaysenberg, and I'd be happy to move that motion. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I believe Councillor Rothwell is not with us at this point. Is that right, Klein? So we'll jump to Councillor Seiler. Welcome, Councillor Seiler. Will you serve as our seconder? Yes, I'll second that. Thank you. <coughs> okay, well, we'll come back to Councillor Rothwell. I hear that you might actually be with us and um, represents good drive, I suspect. Um, are there any discussion points here, any debate on this motion? Seeing none, let's have that vote. Sing it there. Not sure if it registered, but I am in favor. Thank you, Councilor Richardson. Where where we have a little East Grand um, pause here. It's taking a coffee break or something. The clerk is going to work on this. I won't do this character until uh, we either learn that the vote didn't take or that, um, or that um, there's a problem with these. And that's carried. Okay, I'm seeing it show up on my screen now here. Um, so that is carried. Thank you very much. Um, the clerk is going to make a minor uh, revision to the, the instance of eScribe that she's seeing on the screen. So, Council, if you just hold for a moment, we want to be sure that we have this functioning properly. Okay, we believe we've uh, troubleshot the challenge with eScribe in the chamber. So, uh, Council, if you are not seeing the agenda screen, um, please uh, send us a text message about that through WebEx so that we know. Uh, but otherwise, we're going to try to forge ahead here at this point. And uh, that brings us to agenda item number three, the so-called consent agenda. These items are placed in our agenda because they are believed to be non-contentious or informative, yet they require council's recognition and or action. Uh, grouping them expedites our business. However, any councillor wishing to extract an item from the consent agenda for discussion, debate, and individual action may do so. There are six items on our consent agenda tonight, including the minutes of our last regular council meeting. Councillors, do any of you have a desire to extract any of these items for further discussion and or action? If so, please indicate through the text chat function. And we're not seeing any indication of that. So I have a resolution for our consideration related to this matter. The consent items 3.1 to 3.6 be received.
cannot hear the mayor if you can hear us, Todd. Um, hello, everyone. Sorry, we're just the mayor's experiencing some audio issues. So we're just going to try to resolve that quickly. Um, thanks for your patience, everyone. Can anyone hear me at this time? Oh, okay. So that seems to have brought back. I'm seeing council giving me the thumbs up. All right. So let's try this again with regards to the consent agenda. I, I'm not sh sure how far back my audio departed, but um, yeah, since we appear to be back, uh, let's try the consent agenda. I have a resolution for our consideration as follows. A consent item point one to 3.6 be received for information in the minutes of the June 6, 2022 regular council meeting be adopted. Councillor Rothwell, welcome and welcome back. And seems like it was a good drive. And uh, would you serve as the mover for this one? Bonjour, Mayor. Yes. Uh, hello. Uh, I am more than happy to uh, move the motion. Thank you. Thank you. And Councillor Andreessen, uh, will you serve as our seconder? Yes, I'll second that motion. Thank you. Any discussion or debate about the consent agenda? I'm not seeing any expression of that, so let's have that vote. And that is carried. Thank you very much. Uh, let's move forward then to item four. I guess I better grab the gal here. I'm going to need that. Uh, tonight we have one public meeting scheduled pertaining to a requested amendment to North Perth's zoning bylaw. To enable this public meeting, we must temporarily recess from council. I have a resolution that enables our doing so. And uh, it reads that um, as follows, that the Council of the Municipality of North Perth adjourns at 7.14 p.m. for the purpose of a public meeting under the Planning Act concerning the following, a public meeting for a zoning bylaw amendment application 7-2022 by No Quarter Holdings, Inc., uh, Councillor Anstead, welcome tonight. Will you serve as our mover here? Yes, I would move that. Thank you. Thank you. And Councillor Behrens, welcome to you. Will you second that? Yes, I will second that motion. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Any discussion or debate on this one? Seeing none, let's have that vote. And we're missing one, Councillor Behrens. Um, what say you? There we go. Okay, that took. Um, okay, so uh, with that, Council, we are temporarily adjourned. Uh, let's turn our attention to the matter at hand. The reason for the adjournment is to hold a public meeting dealing with application made under the Planning Act. I'd like to welcome all those who are attending this public meeting pursuant to the Planning Act for a proposed amendment to the North Perth Zoning Bylaw. This is a statutory public meeting to deal with the following matter, a zoning bylaw amendment by No Quarter Holdings, Inc. affecting property described as Part Lot 31, Concession 1, Listable, 300 Mitchell Road South in the Municipality of North Perth. Correspondence, reports, and comments received regarding this application will be considered by Council. Those in attendance remotely wishing to make comments concerning this application will be given the opportunity to do so. Anyone wishing to appeal Council's decision in this matter must make verbal submissions during this public meeting or have made a written submission to Council. Those wishing to receive notice of the decision regarding this application must notify the clerk via email or telephone, giving the mailing address and number, telephone number, sorry. At this time, I'm going to call for a summary of this application. This will be offered by Jillian Smith, consulting planner for the County of Perth. Welcome, Ms. Smith. Thank you. Am I able to share my screen? Uh, you should have that authority and control, yes. Uh, can everybody see my screen? I am seeing your screen. Perfect. Um, so tonight I am presenting zoning bylaw amendment number 7, 2022, no quarter holdings. The property is located at 300 Mitchell Road South in Listowel. 
So the applicant is proposing to amend the North Perth zoning bylaw to establish appropriate zoning for the property um, in order to develop the site with two drive through restaurants and a commercial plaza. Specifically, the applicant is proposing two things. The first is to rezone a portion of the property that is currently zoned residential to the highway commercial zone. And the second item is to establish site-specific regulations for the entirety of the site. And these site-specific regulations include a reduced number of stacking spaces for the drive through which are queuing lanes, and permitting drive through facilities in the front yard. So the property is a consolidation of two parcels, being the original parcel and the former Napier Street parcel. The owners acquired the Napier Street parcel er earlier this year, and they merged it with the existing par parcel. The property is just under one hectare at about 0 0.97 hectares in area, with 90 meters of frontage on Mitchell Road. The property is located within the Listowel settlement area and is designated highway commercial in the Listowel official plan. The proposed use of the property is consistent with those land use designations. Um, however, the zoning bylaw applies two zoning categories to the site. So the original parcel, as well as a portion of the acquired lands are zoned C3, which is highway commercial. And then that remaining portion is uh, zoned residential, uh, which is R4. And so the intent of the rezoning application is to uniformly zone the property highway commercial, which will align it with the official plan. So the owners are proposing to develop the currently vacant property with two drive through restaurants and a commercial plaza. Access to the development will be provided from Mitchell Road by a connecting driveway, and that connecting driveway will be the Napier Street lands that were acquired. Uh, section 5.37 of the zoning bylaw sets out regulations for drive through facilities and provides that drive through facilities are not permitted within the front yard and that the minimum number of stacking spaces for drive through is 10 spaces. And so the current proposal, um, actually the portion of the drive through uh, for both drive through facilities in the front yard and will be providing a minimum of seven stacking spaces as opposed to the 10. So the pro proposal um, does not meet the drive through facility regulations of the zoning bylaw and is requesting site specific regulations in addition to the rezoning. I will note though that um, the applicant had originally requested a minimum of six spaces for stacking spaces however, has agreed to seven spaces. So in regards to the location of the drive through in the front yard, um, a portion of each building uh, will be located in the front yard um, and the concept plan has, own, has shown that only the drive aisle for the drive throughs will be in the front yard and all other components, including windows and entrances will be located at the side and rear yard. And with regard to the reduced stacking spaces, the Site plan was submitted to each respective restaurant. We have confirmed that the proposed stacking spaces are adequate for the anticipated demand. And so specifically the Starbucks will have seven stacking spaces, while the Taco Bell will have eight stacking spaces. And the applicant has also prepared a sketch um, showing what any outflow from the drive through facilities would look like. So with the total of 21, stacking spaces related to the Starbucks and 15 for the Taco Bell. Um, the purpose of the sketch is to demonstrate that in the event that queuing for the drive through overflows, it will overflow within the, the site and it will not be overflowing to impact any existing roadway. And so with that said, planning staff are of the opinion that the application to rezone a portion of the property to the C3 zone uh, in order to align it with the official plan in zoning bylaw is appropriate and the proposed site-specific regulations are appropriate for the subject property. Uh, thank you, that concludes my presentation. Thank you very much. Um, let me turn now to, uh, to you to understand um, the details of the notice of this public meeting, Mr. Uh, can you share with us that information? Ms. Smith, are you with us still? Sorry, uh, you cut out for a second. Okay, so I'm, I'm looking at for council to receive information about the notice of public meeting that was distributed in accordance with this application.
Sorry, it's not clear to me. What, what are you looking for? Um, at this point in the meeting, we usually ask the planner to confirm that a notice of this planning meeting was uh, was posted in public places. Yes, and yes. Can you share with us the details of that, please? That it was posted? Uh, yes, there, there are some details normally that are shared uh, with the public about this public meeting so that they know they can tell you. Can you tell me how this meeting was publicized? Uh, notice went out. Sorry, I have to apologize. Um, I have not done a public meeting of this nature before, so that was not clear to me that that was what you were looking for. It looks like the clerk may be able to assist. Let me just set things up so that we don't create a, a, an audio backlog here. Hold on. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, notices inviting persons to the public meeting this evening were mailed on May 24th by first class mail to landowners within 120 meters of the subject property and emailed to all applicable agencies and the notice was posted on the website and on the subject property on May 24th, advising of the public meeting. Uh, thank you for that. And can you advise um, with regards to any correspondence, comments, or reports that have been received uh, ahead of this meeting? Uh, what is our status there? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, we haven't received any correspondence for this application. Okay, thank you. Um, let me just set my audience back here. Uh, all right, so um, we uh, have given due notice. We have received some reports from those to whom a notice was circulated. Uh, at this time, then, we have the opportunity for those attending for the purpose of this public meeting uh, to make comments about the application. Uh, we do this in, in four waves, essentially. First, we call on those who are in favor other than the applicant. Uh, Kirk Klein confirmed for me we have not received pre-registration um, requests for this purpose from that group. She indicates that we have not. Next, we go to those who may be opposed to this application. Kirk Klein, have we received any expressions that indicate they wish to speak tonight in a proposition? Not. Uh, next, we can turn to the applicant or the applicant's agent. I believe Mr. Patterson is with us tonight. Mr. Patterson, did you wish to avail yourself of the opportunity to make comments about your application? Uh, good evening, Mayor Kaysenberg, members of council. Uh, here in support tonight and on behalf of No Quarter Holdings, Inc., uh, really just in support of the staff report and recommendation. And I'd like to thank Ms. Smith for her efforts in uh, putting forward and generating this report for you. Uh, if there's any questions or concerns, I'd be happy to answer them from council. Okay, thank you, Mr. Patterson. Um, now, I turn to the council, to colleagues. Any of you have questions that you would like to ask about this application? And it looks like Councillor Andreessen is first on the speaker's list. Councillor Andreessen. Yes, thank you. Um, through you, Mayor Kaysenberg. I'm not sure who to, who to address the question to, but I will, um, I'll let you figure that out, late, out momentarily. Um, one of my wonderings is that is around that stacking of the parking and um, although it may seem okay right now um, as a community grows we always seem to have issues with traffic so i'd rather us be proactive about that um, rather than reactive as we have noted in the past has been a problem in our area one of my wonderings around um, this is that in some areas I have seen double lanes going into fast food restaurants in order to improve the stacking. And um, they typically merge, they go in as a double lane, they can make their orders and then they can typically er merge and that creates more stacking. Um, it looks to me that you know there could be possibility of that happening um, but there would have to be significant changes made for that to happen. Um, just wondering if that was if any kind of consideration for that in order to think about this long term. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Andreessen. Um, I think if uh, Council's okay with this, I'd like to turn to Mr. Patterson for comments on, on this one potentially. Uh, Mr. Patterson, do you have any comments about that? 
Uh, yes, through you, your worship. Um, your typical double drive throughs or your double stacking lanes are mostly associated with the Tim Hortons or a McDonald's restaurant. Uh, those two being the brands that generate the amount of drive through traffic that would typically support that. A Starbucks and a Taco Bell um, typically do not generate the volume of stacking lane or business compared to those other two uses. So I would know it in my experience, and I've, I've done multiple quick service restaurants throughout my career. I don't believe I've ever done a double stacking lane for a restaurant brand other than McDonald's or Tim Hortons. Um, no disrespect to any of the other brands. They just don't generate the same volume of, of customer service or the same traffic uh, that those two brands do. And therefore, a double drive through would, for the vast majority of the time, uh, sit idle in one lane. And that's why you don't see them do it. Thank you, Mr. Uh, secondary, yeah, secondary to that, uh, Mayor Kaysenberg. Sure. Thank you. So um, I guess my wondering then is that, is it typical for these types of restaurants to have around seven stacking spaces? Is that typical or are we um, needing to change that to make it much less compared to other locations? Mr. Patterson? Again, through your worship, um, a zoning bylaw cannot regulate based on business. So your zoning bylaw cannot stipulate that, for example, a Tim Hortons or a McDonald's should have 10 to 13 stacking spaces, whereas other bylaw or other um, restaurants only have a lower number. Uh, I have seen bylaws written where stacking spaces for banks and car washes and things like that are spelled out different, but that's typically a, a completely different type of business naturally. Um, so for restaurants such as a Starbucks or a Taco Bell, uh, it is my experience again that this is an appropriate amount of stacking. As Ms. Smith noted, the site plan has been circulated to both of those groups, uh, been reviewed and has been accepted by them. And we were careful to create plan in such a manner that if there was um, an oversupply of stacking or a, a large customer base at one time, that there was no physical way that those cars could back out onto Mitchell Road South. Uh, Ms. Smith was careful to ask me that as part of this process, uh, how this would compare to uh, the McDonald's in town and the Tim Hortons in town up on Wallace Avenue North, um, both of which are designed in such a way, unfortunately, that there is no option for cars to stack on site without actually physically backing onto the roadway at some point. Uh, so we were careful to design the site in such a way that we believe that could never happen. And that's one of the reasons why we believe that the, uh, the amount of stacking being requested is appropriate for this site as well. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you uh, Councilor Andreessen. Anyone else uh, on council have questions or comments about this one? Uh, Councilor Rothwell next. Thank you, uh, Mayor Todd. And uh, uh, my question uh, uh, is for Jillian, I believe. Uh, in the report, uh, Jillian, on uh, page four of the report or uh, page 25 of our agenda, it states that uh, MTO will require a traffic impact study to be, pre be prepared and submitted. But then the last sentence uh, of the same paragraph says... Uh, because the uh, town or the municipality assumed control of this portion of Mitchell Road South, where the property is located, uh, MTO does not uh, control access to this portion, and as such, a no uh, no TIS or traffic impact uh, study has been required. So, which 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 one is it? Is there one required or not? Thank you. Uh, hi. So no, uh, traffic impact assessment is, or study is not required. Um, that is an official plan policy for roads that would be regulated by MTO. And in this case, because Listowell sort of is operating this portion, we did not feel that a TIS was necessary. Um, and this was also talked with um, operations as well. And it was agreed that no, we would not request one.
Okay, thanks for clearing that up. I just, uh, I was confused by that. Thank you. Okay, any other questions or comments from council at this point? All right, uh, I'm not seeing any, so let me read the uh, statutory declaration here. Notice of the decision of council will be given in accordance with the provisions of the Planning Act. Council's decision is subject to appeal to the Ontario Land Tribunal in accordance with the provisions of the Planning Act. And uh, that brings to um, a natural end uh, this meeting sh short of uh, us bringing council back into session. So thank you all for attending and participating. Uh, at this time, then, I have a resolution to uh, allow us to move back into regular council. It reads as follows. The public meeting under the Planning Act is now adjourned at 7.32 p.m. And that council reconvenes into regular open council. Councillor well, Duncan, you've been waiting patiently to be greeted by me. Welcome tonight. Will you serve as mover? Yes, I'll make that motion. Thank you. Thank you. And Councillor Johnston, welcome tonight. And will you serve as our seconder here? Thank you, and I would certainly second that. Very good. Um, I invite discussion or debate. We're not seeing any, so let's uh, have the vote here. And that is carried. That means that council has uh, returned to its regular session. I think the clerk was amused by my inviting comment about that. Um, process right uh, okay let's move forward then uh, as matters uh, falling out from item uh, 4.1 uh, I have a resolution and a bylaw enablement resolution for consideration here let's take them in order the first reads as follows that the Council of the Municipality of North Perth receives a report dated June 13th 2022 prepared by the county's consulting planner entitled zoning bylaw amendment number seven dash 2022-NP submitted by Patterson Planning Consultants, Inc., affecting lands described as Part Lot 31, Concession 1, Listable, 300 Mitchell Road South, Municipality of North Perth. And that council approves zoning bylaw amendment number 7-2022-NP, affecting lands described as Part Lot 31, Concession 1, Listable, 300 Mitchell Road South, Municipality of North Perth. Councillor Richardson, can I call on you to be our mover for this one? I would gladly move that. Thank you. Thank you. And Councillor Rothwell, will you serve as seconder? Yes, I will. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Any discussion or debate on that one? Okay, we're not seeing any indication of that, so let's have that vote. And that is carried, thank you. And next up is the bylaw enablement here. Um, that bylaw 62-2022 being a bylaw to amend bylaw number 6 zb 1999 as amended, be introduced, read and considered read at first, second and third time and be finally passed and that the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and the clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation. Councilor Seiler, can I call on you to be our, our mover on this one? Yes, I will, thank you. Thank you. And Councillor Andreessen, will you second this one? Yes, I'll second the motion. Thank you. Thank you. Any discussion or debate? Seeing none, let's have that vote. We're missing me apparently we're missing me okay let's do that there we go and so that is carried uh thank you uh to the the, the uh consultant planner and mr patterson uh, representing the the entity i am sure that there will be a certain amount of rejoicing in the land uh, as the saying goes because um starbucks and taco bell well, that's a big thing people like those things all right uh let's move forward then to um Let's see here, we're gonna move on to item five on our agenda, the reports from departments and key staff. The first is an item coming from the CAO's department. For item 5.1.1, the CAO brings forward a request to add a new staff position, community developer and support worker to our organization chart. This position will be funded if council agrees to its introduction by funds provided from the city of Stratford 
acting as consolidated service manager for Perth County and hails from provincial funds. Um, I'm going to call on North Perth CAO Chris Snell to introduce the report and answer questions following the same. CAO Snell, welcome tonight. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, Council. Yes, as Council is aware, um, North Perth collaborated with Family Services, Perth Huron, and the City of Stratford and the United Way for the funding, hiring, and delivery of, of services for a pilot program for the position of community development and support worker. Unfortunately, um, here in Perth Family Services was unable to um, um, fill the position and the money has been returned um, to the municipality. No, St. Mary's has, has recently completed a one-year pilot program in partnership with um, Family Services Perth Huron and the other partners involved in the, in the program and I have had conversations with their CAO about the successes of the, of the program. There appears to be the need for such a position in North Perth. Um, the position will address um, needs resulting from COVID-19, mental health, homelessness, and the community safety and well-being plan. The City of Stratford Social Services Department have committed to ongoing support and mentoring for the position. Um, I've outlined um, sort of the vision for the position in the report as well as um, the, the position was fully budgeted in the 2022 operating budget um, with $70,000 of the funds coming from the city of Stratford with the remainder being supported um, from the municipality. And also attached to the report is um, the proposed um, issues and objectives um, hoping that we can achieve from um, this position. The reason why we think we can be successful in filling the position versus um, Family Services Perth Huron is that we will not be seeking qualifications of a, a fully qualified social worker, which is what um, was originally asked for. Um, this person will have a background in social services or healthcare, um, but will not need to be a fully qualified social worker. And therefore, um, we feel that we can um, fill the position um, through this manner. Um, just for council's information, the city of St. Mary's is also taking a very similar um, um, stance with the, the continuation of the pilot pro program and the position will be in, become an employee of the town of St. Mary's. I'm certainly happy to answer any questions council may have. Uh, thank you, CEO Snell. Um, let's turn to questions or first comments. Uh, Councillor Duncan. Thank you, through you, Mayor. Um, Chris, funding from the city of Stratford, is that just one-time funding? And what, in in that case, will this just be a one-year contract position with uh, potential to renew next year, depending on funding? Yes, that's how it'll be structured. It'll be a one-year pilot project, with, so it'll be a one-year contract with um, potential to be extended, um, depending on um, what comes out of the community safety well-being plan or other um, initiatives that um, the municipality can seek. Thank you. Anyone else with the questions or first comments? Okay, I'm not seeing any. Uh, so I have a resolution then for our consideration that the Council of the Municipality of North Perth receives this report for information and approves the community developer and support worker position for the Municipality of North Perth. Uh, let's call on Councillor Anstead. Will you serve as mover for this one? Yes, I would move that motion. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Behrens, will you be our seconder? Yes, I will second that motion. Thank you. Thank you. Any discussion or debate? Not seeing any, so let's have that vote. And that is unanimously carried. Thank you, CAO Snell. Uh, let's move forward then. Uh, we have a sort of light agenda in the middle here tonight. Uh, so we have no reports from the following departments, corporate services, programs, facilities, and environmental services. We know all of these uh, departments are working hard on their annual plans and objectives, and we thank them for their service. That means we can move forward to item 5.6 in our agenda. This is reports from the manager of operations. Uh, tonight we have uh, one report here, uh, and uh, this pertains to municipal drains. I need to up with my paperwork here. 
Um, council is invited under section 6.1 to proceed with the request for the improvement of the Horton Municipal Drain under section 78 of the Drainage Act and to appoint an engineer. I believe it's Mr. Richardson who usually deals with these things. The clerk has given me the nod. So Mr. Scott Richardson, our drainage superintendent is with us tonight. Welcome Mr. Richardson, you keep us busy, sir. My pleasure. Uh, good evening, Council and uh, Mayor Todd. Yeah, the Horton Drain serves uh, lots 5 to 8 and Concession 1 in the Wallace Ward and the lots 60 and 61, Concession 1 in the Elm Ward. The uh, Horton Drain is a tile drain that consists of 10-inch uh, to up to 16-inch diameter tile. and is approximately 480 meters in length. The catchment area or the watershed boundary would capture about 110 acres. Uh, the on-site meeting was held on, uh, or an on-site meeting was held on June the 8th for the Brant, Brant Municipal Drain, and from that meeting, the owners expressed interest in the need for upgrades to the existing Horton Drain as well. Uh, they're experiencing poorly drained lands. The drain functions properly, and it is just undersized by today's standards. Uh, the owners are interested in installing uh, more intense drain of systems systems on their properties and the need for a better more robust outlet is required to complete their personal upgrades after the brant drain meeting a request was signed by all the owners in the horton uh drain watershed to start the process thank you uh thank you mr richardson so let me uh, turn to council any questions or first comments about this banner I'm not seeing any, are you fine? Okay, so I have a resolution uh, to affect the, the recommendation of staff here that the Council of the Municipality of Earth in accordance with section 78 of the Drainage Act proceeds with the request for improvement to the Orton Municipal Drain and that the Council of the Municipality of North Perth appoints Dietrich Engineering to investigate the possible improvements to the Horton Municipal Drain. Councillor Duncan, can I call on you to be our mover here? Yes, I'll make that motion. Thank you. And Councillor Johnston, will you be our seconder? I would certainly second that. Thank you very much. Any discussion or debate? Okay, we're not seeing any, so let's have that vote. And that is carried with the noted abstention of Councillor Andreessen. Uh, that allows us to move uh, forward. Thank you, Mr. Richardson, as always. Thank uh, you. Our attention now to item 5.7, reports from the Development and Protective Services Department. There is no report from this department uh, for this meeting, uh, but I tip my hat to them for three successful um, breakfast, uh, firefighter breakfasts in the community and, uh, and uh, it was a good time uh, by all. Uh, okay, let's turn now to item six then on our agenda. Uh, for item 6.1, councillors, are there any reports you would like to ask of staff or of our committees to request opportunity to speak, use the usual process and the text chat in the web conferencing tool? Klein, we're not seeing anything. Uh, we're, we have received no items of correspondence beyond that already shared for council's disposition, which moves us from item 7 to item 8. At item eight, we normally consider bylaws. This evening, we don't have any additional bylaws for our consideration, which allows us to move to item number nine on our agenda. Uh, are there any councillors wishing to leave to give notice of motion this evening? We're not seeing any expression of that. So let's move on to item 10 on our agenda. For item 10.1, are there any announcements that would be a benefit to our community or that reflect well on North Perth this time. Again, if you'd like to speak, uh, we would uh, love to see your expression and interest in that in the text chat window. And I see Ms. Gangle has a couple of exciting announcements and news. So uh, let's turn the uh, microphone and the floor over to Ms. Gangle to bring us up to date on uh, one of my favorite annual events. Ms. Gangle. Thank you, Mayor, members of Council. Uh, very excited to uh, share a couple of things. Um, our North Perth pools and splash pads are now open. We want to provide, um, share our special thanks to all of our aquatic and facility staff. Uh, they've worked very hard behind the scenes in preparing for the summer season, so we are looking forward to a safe and fun summer season. Uh, 
Uh, second announcement is that uh, this Saturday uh, is our Teddy Bear Family Play Day, uh, June 18th from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Listwell Memorial Park. Uh, we are very excited and happy to be able to have this event running in person again. So thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Kangle, and I'm looking forward to participating in, uh, in that event on Saturday and invite all of our community to uh, join with me and, and bring your favorite uh, stuffed animal with you uh, for participation. Uh, any other announcements uh, to the benefit of the community? All right, that brings us to item, uh, item number 11. We have one matter tonight that uh, is to be considered in a closed session meeting of council. I will read the resolution that will explain our intent and enable our action to enter closed session. The resolution is as follows. The Council proceeds in camera at 7.47 p.m. to address a matter pertaining to the following. Advice that is subject to solicitor client privilege, including communications necessary for that purpose, and litigation or potential litigation, including matters before administrative tribunals affecting the municipality or local board regarding the North Perth Police Services Board at all, ATS Stone. And I call on Councillor Richardson to be our mover here. I will move that. Thank you. Thank you. And Councillor Rothwell, will you be our seconder? I'll second the motion, yes. Thank you very much. Uh, any discussion or debate? Seeing none, let's have that vote. And that is carried, thank you. Council, we will move now to our closed session meeting. Uh, we need a little bit of audiovisual reconfiguration. Um, I'm awaiting Simon's arrival in the chamber to assist with that and uh, just hold on for a few moments. For those who are not invited to this closed session, we ask you to exit the web conference call at this hour. And thank you for your participation for this point. Hold on.
Uh, Councillor Richardson, you've been our, our trusty uh, advisor on uh, when we're back on in uh, live stream to YouTube. So I'll await your instruction. Will do. Slight delay. Yeah. Okay, we're good, good to go. Thank you very much. So uh, that, uh, uh, welcome back. We, Council has held a closed session meeting uh, under item 11 of our uh, regular meeting agenda. Uh, for item 12, I can confirm that Council did discuss the matter identified in our enabling resolution for a closed session meeting of Council, stuck strictly to that business for the purposes of the closed session and uh, will not be, uh, re will not be divulging uh, the information at this hour uh, or time because it is highly confidential uh, again for the reasons stipulated in our enablement motion. Council as a mandated good practice acts near the end of its meeting agenda to confirm all of its actions and business of its meeting through what is called the confirmatory bylaw. I have a draft of our confirmatory bylaw tonight that reads as follows. It's bylaw number 81-2022 being a bylaw to confirm generally previous actions of the Council of the Municipality of North Perth be introduced, read, and considered read a first, second, and third time and be finally passed, and that the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and the clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation. Councillor Duncan, will you serve as mover for this one? Yes, I'll make that motion. Thank you. And Councillor Johnston, will you be our seconder on this one? Yes, I would second that. Thank you. Any discussion or debate? Seeing none, let's have that vote. And that is carried with the abstention of Councillor Andreessen, who had declared an earlier conflict. Uh, thank you. And uh, Councillors, that means that we have completed deliberation and taken action on the business that did come before us tonight. I have a motion to adjourn, which reads as follows, that the council meeting adjourns at 8.11 p.m. To meet again for general council business on Monday, June 20th, 2022, at 7 p.m. Can I call on Councillor Richardson to be our mover for this one? I'll move, move that motion. Thank you. Thank you. And Councillor Rothwell, will you be our seconder? So yes, I will. There we go. Thank you. Since that's not debatable, let's have that vote. And that is unanimously carried. Uh, therefore, this council will meet again for our next regular meeting using digital technologies once again on Monday, June 20th, 2022. Until that hour, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everyone. I wish you a great week. Don't forget the teddy bear parade. See you soon.